Hey guys, this is Tonner and today we're going to be talking about my Voja deck. Um, I typically don't make videos about my own decks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down in the uh, comments of my decks. If you guys have one in there that you want me to kind of go through and discuss and stuff, then I'm happy to. Uh, but I wanted to kind of start off with this Voja one because of a funny story. Um, so... Uh, typically I kind of go to my local game store for Friday Night Live. I haven't been going for a while. Um, I, I really should get into going more. I've just been super busy. But the, on uh, this most recent Friday I went and I was sitting down in a pod with three other people and then someone comes up and there was well, two, two other people. Someone comes up and they're like, hey, I recognize you. You're Torna from YouTube, right? I'm like, this is so weird, right? I'm not in a very big city. It's a decent size busy. It's probably like the what, third or fourth biggest city within Victoria, which is the state that I live in. But it, I'm in Australia. It's not a big city. Um, and someone recognized me was just totally out of the blue. Uh, and he specifically talked about my Voja deck, which was really nice because Voja is probably like my my pet deck. Now, uh, I will not say that my Voja is very well super duper optimized, but that's because I didn't want it to kind of get away from me to the point that it was too crazy because I feel like Voja is easily one of those commanders that it's just a huge threat on board and uh, like just makes it so that you can easily get away with the game. Uh, so we're going to talk about my Voja deck because he specifically kind of talked about it and uh, I'm going to bring it to my LGS on Friday to see if he's there. Hopefully he doesn't watch this video and encounter any of it or anything like that. Um, but my Voja deck is built around mostly elves now. It used to be mostly around wolves, but I kind of transitioned it over more to elves because I felt like the wolves just weren't working well enough. Um, but I still have probably more uh, wolves in here than you probably expect or necessarily want. Uh, so uh, we've got Voja, obviously, as the command here. Vigilance, Trample, Ward 3. Keep in mind, he only costs 5. So he's cost 5 and then Ward 3 is crazy. But because of the way the deck's built, all right, we, we're going to be building elves. So many elves are just mana dorks that can get your Voja out very quickly. Whenever he attacks, he's going to put pl X plus one plus one creature counters on each creature you control, where X is the amount of elves you control. And then he's also going to draw a card for each wolf. So if you've got five elves out and you attack with your Voja, boom, now you're putting five plus one plus one counters. It's it can so easily get crazy, especially once you keep in mind that these are counters. This isn't until end of turn. They are going to continuously stay there until the end of time or until the creature's removed or whatever. Um, it is just a really crazy card. Uh, and I just, I love Naya, my favorite kind of color combination, as well as I just love wolves as like my favorite creature of all time. Um, so I was really happy when they announced this. So going through the deck, right? So we've got Voyager, obviously it's a commander there. The artifacts, we've got a few built-in artifacts for like support around uh, our elves. So Herald's Horn, making it so that the elves cost one less. Patchwork Banner, giving all the elves plus one, plus one. The Mask would next, is going to turn all our elves into wolves and all our wolves into elves, which can easily, easily break the game because now you're drawing cards for each creature you've got. You're getting plus one, plus one for each creature you've got. It's, yeah, crazy. Uh, and then we've got Lightning Greaves just to kind of give an additional protection to Voja usually. There's other options though for it. Now as for the creatures, you know, we've got a whole bunch of mana dorks in here. Uh, Copperhorn Scout is crazy in this deck because you attack with Voja and Copperwood, Copperhorn. Copperhorn gets all the plus ones, so it's less likely that it dies. And then from there, you're going to then untap all your creatures, essentially kind of giving them a kind of... Um, a kind of vigilance, not exactly vigilance, but very similar. Uh, Ascendant Pack Leader, um, just a nice wolf. So as I said, like I've got a few nice wolves in here. Devoted Druid, because of the way we're getting plus one, plus ones, if we put a minus one onto it, we can put enough minus ones that we're going down to like making this a, what, minus one, well, zero, one then. And then we just get a whole bunch of, you know, plus ones next time. And then we just do this to get a whole bunch of mana. Just an insane amount of mana with this. Uh, we've got a bunch of just really great elves um, and a lot of elves here that are mana dorks that give more mana than just like one right so like gear sage here it's going to get uh put mana for each plus one plus one onto it this deck is primarily green it's just so much green in it because of the elves um but you know we've got some other white stuff in here like imposter uh we've got bloodline pretender here that can get 
in, uh, really, really big. Wolf Skull Shaman is great in this deck because of the fact that um, each time you reveal an elf off of the top of your deck, you're then going to create a wolf, and then you've got that elf there that you can play next time as well. Uh, there's not all that many tokens in here, but we do have some token stuff, so Woodland Champion kind of takes advantage of that. Circle of Dreams Druid is just a uh, what Gaius Cradle on a beat stick. Um, Elvis Druid getting everything <laughs> just like a lot of ways to kind of ramp up um and yeah so uh the one that i really love in here is galadr uh galadrum brigade though because we can squad this a bunch of times and then you know it's going to give us a uh, so many um elves <laughs> that are all going to sorry like additional elves but then also those elves are all going to get plus one for each time you've squatted it if you squad this like you know two times every elf is then getting plus three plus three from it it's out of control so quickly uh mirror entity here is like a big finisher because we're creating an, a, a big finisher that if um you know, Voge is dead, then this gives you an additional option to be able to have another finisher because we're going to have so many mana dorks out there. We can then go through with Mirror Entity and just tap all those mana dorks, give everything, you know, plus 12, plus 12, and just swing in for a finisher there. Um, Rocco is great to be able to allow us to get an impulse draw as well as, you know, get plus one, plus ones onto things and then create food tokens. Um, Rishkar turns everything into a mana dork. Horan Mola gets really, really big very quickly. Um, I'm not going to go through every single thing. Um, just going through most of them. Most recent addition, like Wild Seer. Um, so I added Wild Seer in here. One, he's a five cost, six, six trampler, which is really nice, but he's giving all our enchantments cascade. I actually have a fair few enchantments in here. I got 10 enchantments. The new innkeeper's talent, court of Garen big, uh, howling moon lets us, you know, create more, uh, wolves as well. Uh, and joins up to double all of them. War ladies call. Now these aren't very expensive enchants, right? They're like three costs and stuff, but we still have enough in here that, like at two cost or below that we've got enough that we can kind of cascade into, which is nice. And we can kind of take advantage of that. I've got a lot of haste enablers like rhythm, uh, rising of the day, uh, uncivil unrest as well, um, to be able to allow us to just get a whole bunch of haste out there. Invigorating hot spring was a card that I wasn't so sure about, but then one game, it actually won me the game because, um, I had it out. Um, I had a plus one. I had the plus one plus ones on it. I moved one of them onto Voja. He then got haste, uh, or she got haste. I think it's she got haste, and then boom! Now I could attack with Voja straight away. So just be giving Voja haste is very important because you don't want to have Voja out without being able to attack immediately with them and be able to get these plus ones going off. Um, as for like instants and sorceries, I don't have all that many. Uh, instance, I've just got mostly removal or protection with Dawn's Truce and Unbreakable. This is probably the area that I would look at upgrading next for sure. Like Flawless Mood Uber, I've got in other decks that I could easily put into here. Um, I've got like a Clever Concealment. Um, I've got some other stuff just to be able to protect my board, which is probably what I should be upgrading it wise and like going to add, add more of that stuff in here. But again, I didn't want it to get too overwhelming, so I haven't gone and upgraded it yet. The lands, I've got a lot of really great lands in here. Um, not crazy, like I haven't gone and added in heaps of shock lands and stuff, but I still have some nice ones in here, especially around like the Three Tree City. Um, what other really great ones in here? I've got like, uh, what was it, the... Castle uh, Castle Garenbrig. I've got a Bountiful um, Promenade in here. I do not have a Jetmere's Garden. Jetmere's Garden has been too expensive, despite the fact that I have so many Naya decks. I still don't have a single Jetmere's Garden. I still have the thriving stuff in here that needs replacing. And then for the sorceries, you know, I've got a couple big removals in here. Everything Comes to Dust, I think, is a secret sleeper, really, really strong board wipe. Because for this, right, I can, if I just tap for the Convoke, if I tap one elf and one wolf, uh, that means that my board's safe. I can uh, obviously tap more for Convoke to be able to Convoke it bigger and not need to spend as much. But all I need to tap is like one elf and one wolf and my board, besides my artifacts and enchantments is safe. Obviously I want my enchantments to kind of stick around in my artifacts, but it's still great. And we've got a farewell in here. This is probably the farewell from 
what the Doctor Who said, I think. I had an extra one of those that's in here. Um, again, you know, the Instance and Sorceries is probably the area that I need to kind of go and upgrade for sure. But because I've got like 39 creatures in here, this is a very, very fast deck. This is a, I'm turning my brain off. I'm playing creatures. I'm turning them sideways and I'm making them big deck essentially, um, which I love. I love this deck. Um, it's, it's, as I said, my kind of pet deck. So yeah, um, I'd love to hear from you guys as to what you think. There is definitely like, you know, areas for me to go and upgrade this. Um, I just didn't want it to be kind of too strong. And as I said, Voja is one that you can easily make too strong. So I'd love to hear from you guys what your pet deck is and stuff. And then also, you know, what decks you'd love to see me cover in a future video of my own. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye.